Getting the fiber cement vertical siding up is a bit of a chore, but it's only half the battle. Once you get it up, you have to seal the joints and put a coat of paint on it. All I'm doing right now is caulking the seams and then I'm following up, dipping my finger into some water and running it down to smooth it out and press it in to make it fills, make sure that it fills the void completely. And brand I'm using is Alex Plus and the reason for that is it came recommended to me by somebody who installs a lot of this stuff. So I'm getting ready to fill the seams on the side of the windows. There's really nothing fancy to this. I'm just filling that seam between the siding panel and the window with caulk. And then I'm gonna come back and with a wet finger, I'm gonna run down the whole thing, squeeze it in and make it nice and even. Of course, I wanna start off with clean, clean tip. This is not the glamorous part for sure, but tomorrow we'll come in here and we'll put a coat of paint on it. It'll look pretty good. So, and I'm working on getting somebody up here to take care of this electric for me as well. So get that electric panel in, get that approved, get them to cut the trench and then put the electric line in. That'd be a big thing. Well, hello gobble gobbles. What do you think, Apollo? Huh? What do you think? He's about to lose his mind. Well, I got off work, came out here. It's uh, about six o'clock. As soon as I got the lid off the bucket, it started to rain, but it only lasted five minutes. And none of it got on this side of the house. It was coming from the other side. There's a big storm about five miles that way, just dumping buckets of rain. But the wind is heading that direction, and I'm hoping. There won't be anything following it up. There's nothing in the forecast. I should probably be able to get this painted today. This hardy panel siding material takes paint wonderfully. We are by no means professional painters. So we took advice from people who we know who do this for a living. Chose a really good quality paint. Used the best quality roller that we could find. And apply the paint in a steady methodical way. Making sure that you get enough paint up on the wall for coverage. But not so much paint that it runs. Time to remove any paint that gets on the edge or side of the window is now while it's still wet. You don't want to have to try and fight it after it's had time to set up.
Like a lot of things on this build, when you get one thing fixed, it reveals something else that needs attention. We will have to clean and repaint block walls. And then we'll have to figure out a way to get the landscaping straight so that the clay doesn't keep splashing up on them. dog leads a pretty good life. Not bad for a little rescue dog from the streets of Cadiz, Spain. Well, I gotta say, I'm pleased with it so far. Now, when we painted before, everything took at least three coats. I haven't cut anything in up there. I'll take care of that and put a couple coats and then we'll do the last coat bring everything together i've got two more coats over here one of the cool things about paint is it hides flaws but another cool thing about paint is it also shows you some of the flaws i found a few things on this wall that i don't like i'm going to change some of my nails are sitting a little proud i'm gonna have to go around and see them and i'm gonna have to make an adjustment to my nailer so that that doesn't happen next time it's just a little bit of work after my work day is done, but it's going to all add up eventually. I'm going to get things cleaned up real quick so I can go home. Yeah, he's definitely ready to go home. Hold on. Forgot all about this wood I got up here. Yep. Let me do something with that. We didn't even make it off off the build site. So I don't know what that paint's gonna look like, but if it's messed up, we'll do it again. Today I'm heading to pick something up for the farm. Now, Jafana and I are having our seven year anniversary real soon. She's been asking me to teach her how to drive the tractor with the rotary cutter on it. And I don't want to. It's kind of dangerous. Sometimes I don't like doing it. There are a lot of areas we'd really like to get into with that tractor that just seem a little too steep, a little too dangerous. And it would be great if we could get a piece of equipment that could handle that. Well. That's what I'm getting ready to go pick up. And the romantic guy that I am, this is pretty much Jafana's anniversary gift. As I said before, I know what romance is. I'm getting her exactly what I know she wants. This is what I came for. It's a Ventrac, a 4500Z. They answered some last minute questions that I had about it. Gave me a crash course on how to turn it on and operate it. And then I loaded it up on the trailer. I measured the trailer deck at 75 inches wide. And a quick measurement of the Ventrac showed that it was about 73 inches wide. So it fit like a glove. Well, I'm here with Tim from Piedmont Power and I'm getting ready to hop in and take this thing home and put it to work. Tim, I appreciate it. Anytime, sir. Thank you. I'll be getting a Dave. call. Let me know when those parts come in. I will. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, man. Tim was real good. Helped me get a decent setup on this mower. And uh, it's not just a mower. This is a tractor. 
it may look like it's just a lawnmower, but if you've never seen one of these things before, yeah, you're in for a treat. Now I've probably only got about an hour of light, but that's plenty of time to tighten this up and do a few other things around here. First thing I'm gonna do is put the ROPS up because safety, it may not always be on the front of my mind, but it's not dead last. While I was cutting my teeth on the Ventrac, the sun was busy dipping down over the mountain. It was starting to get dark, but I figured I still had a little bit of time to put this thing through some paces and shake it out just a bit. Now I got up out of the seat just now, and there's a safety mechanism on it that turned that off. But, yes, I've been out here about 15 minutes. Cutting my teeth on it. I've never run one of these before. This is a Ventrac 4500Z, and this is a brand new tough cut mower deck on the front of it. 68 inches wide, capable of handling things about inch and a half to two inches thick. And this thing is chopping it up. Now I've pushed some of these bigger bushes down, did just fine. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna clear the entryway an area that I can't get into with the tractor just because there's too many obstacles. Well, I can't get into with the Coyote and the rotary cutter, but I can get into it with this tractor. The edge of this field sits about four feet above the road. It's an area that's a little bit bumpy and you just can't get over to it with the tractor. This always has to be cut by hand. Being able to ride this mower up next to it is going to make a lot of difference. It's a time saver. It's also going to help us decide what we're going to keep and what we're not going to keep. The area that I'm mowing. When we bought this land six years ago, it was all forested. It was mostly pine with a few hardwoods in it and lots and lots of mountain laurel. Mountain laurel is hardy, grows in a lot of rough environments around here. It was nice to have something green something that I didn't have to work hard to keep alive. And it's been a good placeholder while I tried to turn this field into something that we could grow stuff on. This road edge is positioned with a couple of oak trees that we decided to keep in such a way that the tractor, the large tractor, can't get back in there. Any maintenance has to be done by hand with a weed eater. And that usually takes a couple hours. This area was the entryway onto our property when the loggers were here removing all the trees. It has pretty much just remained an overgrown scar since then. It's very difficult to get in and unless you get in and you spend half a day with a weed eater, you're not really going to be able to make much a dent in it.
This little dirt and gravel road is one lane wide. We share it with some of our neighbors. And if you're going one way and a neighbor's going the other way, somebody's got to find a way off the road in order for you to pass. Right here, I left an area wide enough so people could pull over. And I lined the edge of it with some trees and logs. Unfortunately, it overgrows so much that I don't think anybody wants to pull their vehicle over there. So being able to tighten that up really quick, this took me less than five minutes. That's a big deal. At the end of the day, when you're tired from other things, being able to jump on the vent rack and go clean some things up will make a big difference in how the place presents itself. I wish I could say that this was the magic bullet that was going to make everything beautiful. But really, when you're out here, there's no one thing that's going to do that, except grit and hard work. This tractor and mower deck setup handle a lot of really rough stuff, thick grass, brush, but where it really shines is on slopes and steep uneven ground. Well, you can probably tell I was starting to have a lot of fun there toward the end, especially over there on the dam. So I got to say, I'm real pleased with this. I did something there at the end and turned off the turned off the, the PTO and couldn't get it to come back on, but I'll figure out what I did tomorrow when I've got some daylight. This thing is outstanding so far. And if it's everything that I expect and everything I've read about, this thing is going to be a game changer for us for maintaining this place. And I can't wait to see Jafana's face when she comes on up here and she sees what I was able to accomplish at the opening to this place. And I cannot wait to see her running this thing. Come on back and check us out again at Break Hard Orchard. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. We'll be here.